everyone. Welcome to Maya 2017. This is going to be our solar system project. Um, it's located inside your introduction to Maya 2017 handbook by Cybex. Um, if you look inside my playlist, you'll see that there's also a 2015 solar system project that was done in Maya 2015. Um, so this is going to be the updated version with Maya's new UI and uh, some things are in some different spots. So. Um, if this is your first time using Maya, great. If you've been working in Maya before, this can be a little refresher on how the UI works, and I'll show you guys where everything is at. Okay, so let's just go ahead and dive in and get started here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create ourselves a new project. We're going to go to File, Project Window. Um, I'm going to create myself a new project. We're going to call it Solar System 2017. Location is going to be underneath Users, Owner, Desktop. Um, and as we save our scenes, they'll be located underneath our scenes folder here. Anything, excuse me, um, anything we render out, um, that'll be underneath our images. Our source images will be our texture files that will have attached objects to give it a look. Um, and all the rest of the stuff we'll kind of get into as we kind of go through our project. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and hit accept. And from here, we're going to go to file, set project. This way, as we're is if you're working in different projects, Maya wants to know which project it's putting stuff into. So let's say I, I'm going to go now work on a different project. You want to tell Maya which project folder is going to be stashing things in and where, when we open up a scene file, where it's going to be looking at for texture sources. Um, so we got to set our project. We're going to tell it now that we're going to be using Solar System 2017. There it is right there. We'll go ahead and hit set. Okay. I'm going to go to save scene as. Call it scene one. Save it as a my binary um, and just go save as. Okay, that's okay. All right, so now we got our first scene already set and we also have the project set. So now Maya is looking at this particular project folder. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in here now. So, um, what I also like to do here, and I do this with most of my, any version of Maya that I'm working in, I like to have my own shelf. So, you see all these little icons in here. Um, they do make these little tabs here so that depending on what you're doing, you don't have to go to all these drop downs to find the tools you're looking for. But typically, I like to have the tools I want on my, my little bar here. So I usually go over here, sorry, not that one, um, over here and go to New Shelf. I'm going to call this one uh, Coral Modeling. My name's Coral, so not the, the, the Coral, the type of modeling. Okay, and you'll look over here, now we have this new little tab here. So um, if you want to go back to the ones you had here before, no problem, just go ahead and click on those. Um, but this way, now I can add all the tools that I like to use on this shelf here. Okay, so before I start creating a bunch of tools that you guys have no idea what they do, um, we're going to start jumping into creating objects in this project. And as we create them, then we'll start to add tools to this shelf here. And that way you guys will know what the tools are, what are why they're on this shelf, and where you can find them underneath these drop downs. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, um, we're going to create ourselves um, for our solar system. We need to create our sun, right? So we're going to go to create, and underneath polygon primitives, that is where all of our primitive objects are. We also have NURBS primitives, volume primitives, but we're going to go to polygon primitives. That's what we're going to mainly be working in here. And we're going to go to sphere. Okay, so now sphere pops up over here. Um, I have this little tool that just kind of already came up active. Um, this is a scale tool. You see little boxes on the end that indicates that we're in scale mode. Um, I want this to be a bigger sun, so I'm going to go ahead and scale it up. So I'm scaling it up like so. Okay. All right, that looks good. Um, and if you look over here on the left, you'll see it says P-Sphere 1. Now, that's just a standard name that Maya gives uh, primitive objects. Um, P probably stands for primitive, Sphere 1. If I create another one, it'll say P-Sphere 2. Um, but for me, anytime I work inside of a product, I try to keep to a particular type of naming conventions. Um, that way, things stay organized over here in my outliner. So I'm going to change this name over here. I'm going to go ahead and double click on it. I'm going to call it Mesh. Oops. Call that Mesh underscore Sphere. No, not Sphere. We're going to call this one Sun. Okay. All right. Now, 
we have this named over here. And let's look at the attributes for this guy, okay? So let's look over here and we have, um, I'm sorry, we're going to look at the channel box. I don't want the attributes. Um, so if you don't have this channel box tab over here on the side, um, just go over here and this one on the far right here that's glowing, that is our channel box. Just go ahead and click on that and your little channel box tab will pop up. Um, over here, you'll see that says translate and rotate. These are all with zeros in them. That tells me that the sun is created at what's called the world origin. Um, zero, zero, zero on the translate and zero, zero, zero on the rotate. So this is at the world origin. I'm going to go to scale and we'll go ahead and I'm going to, I want this because right now it's at 6.3 because I scaled it up. But I want this to be actually 111. So that this is, uh, that's what the scale will read as. So I'm going to go to freeze the transforms is what it's called. So that's one of my first things that I'm going to add on here. I'm going to go to modify, freeze transforms. And to add a tool onto your shelf, you hold down control, shift, left mouse button on the, the subject uh, tool. Okay, so now you have one over here that says FT for freeze transforms. Now if I click FT with this here selected, so left mouse button, click on this as long as it's green. We'll go ahead and click this. And now you can see over here my scale XYZ is at one. And that's great because if uh, we go to something else, like uh, we, we create, and this is a topic I'm going to talk about a little later on. When we start doing animation, if we don't have a, a scale that's all at one, and then we start having other things that have varying scales, um, it can start affecting the children of the animation. So um, it's one of the reasons why we keep all of our scales at one and all whenever we can, unless we intentionally want to have something deform or change shape. Um, but in this case, we don't. So I'm kind of setting ourselves up to where we'll succeed when it comes to animation time a little bit later. Okay. So something else you guys might want to do, this is what I've got going on in the background over here, so I know what all my planets are. Um, I want to go and actually pull up something on Google that says, okay, here are my planets um, and the moons that they would have, so I can kind of count those up and create those as I'm making my solar system. Okay? All right. So next thing I want to do is I want to create myself Mercury. Okay? So, and to do that, um, I could go back up to Mesh and I can go ahead and create my, or go to create and create myself another sphere here, but what I want to do is to just do a bit faster of a workflow. And to do that, I'm going to duplicate the sphere I currently have here. So I'm going to hit Control D. Okay? And I'm going to translate in the, the X or the Z will be fine. Just don't do it in the Y. And I'm just going to move it off to the side here. Okay? And I'm going to scale it down. Okay, now, now that I'm in this view, now I have it outside of the origin, because what's the, the reason why I'm still in this particular view here and not inside of an orthographic view is because if I duplicated it inside with an orthographic view that overlays it in a way that makes it where it's hard to see the new object. So now that it's out, I'm actually going to switch my views to an orthographic view. An orthographic view just means that it's locked down to two axes, it's not 3D. Um, so this little icon over here on the left, it's got little four icons right there. If you go ahead and click on that, that'll bring up your four panel view. You can also just press spacebar with your mouse over here floating in the middle, and that will also bring up your four panel orthographic views. Now if you look down at the bottom of each one of these little windows, it'll say perspective on one. It says top Y, front Z, side X. which is great because this is actually an upgrade from 2015. Before it was in green, it's very hard to see, and it just said top front side. Now telling you that the Y axis is the top, um, and that this is the front tells you that Z means that you're looking at the front with a Z pointing at you, and that this is the side with the X pointing at you. This is kind of for someone who's new to 3D, this is a, a helpful little gesture. So anyways, back to the, the subject here. We're going to be working in our top view. So I'm going to go ahead and press with my, my mouse floating over here where it says top. Floating up in here, I press spacebar and it brings the top view into full view. Okay? And I want to give myself a little bit more workspace. I'm going to go ahead and push this over here off to the side a little bit. So just hover it here, left mouse button, drag it off to the side. Okay? Good. 
All right, so something else I want to do is I want to bring this a little bit closer. This is a little bit too far out. And I actually want to keep grid spacing kind of even. So I'm going to use what's called grid snapping. Um, over here um, at the top here, you'll see all these little magnets. Each magnet does something a little bit different. Um, but if you go over here, you'll see snap to grids. So we go ahead and click on snap to grids. I'll make it to where now as I translate this back and forth, it'll snap to the next grid point. So I can take this one here and I can keep, you can see how it pops from grid to grid, which makes it to where I can keep very even spacing. Okay. All right. So here we go. This one's right here. I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller, just a teeny bit. And I'm going to call this one Mercury. Okay. Hit enter. And I'm going to freeze the transforms on this one. Okay, now that's good. Um, I'm going to now create the next one. Now, if you're, I'm going to turn, actually, we'll keep good, good snaps on. Um, if you are following the book for by 2017, um, they do actually have very specific measurements for the scale of all the planets, um, which are fairly accurate, um, but I'm not going to go by those. I want to actually have keep this a uh, um, little bit more of a, a free form type deal. Um, I don't think that the scale really matters too much for this particular project since it's uh, more of a learning curve thing on how to use Maya and not so much of a, um, a simulation of what the actual solar system would look like to scale. Um, anyways, so reasoning aside, let's go ahead and keep moving forward here. So our next planet here I'm going to create is going to be Venus. So again, with our Mercury here selected, I'm going to hit Control D. That'll duplicate my my plan again. I'm just going to move it off to the side a couple more grid spaces. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this one. This one's going to be Venus now. Okay. And Venus is just a little bit bigger than Mercury. It's actually almost the same size as Earth. Okay. And again, I'm going to freeze the transforms on Mercury. So or Venus, sorry. And then I'm going to duplicate Venus. We're going to keep going forward here um, a little bit faster now. So we got Earth now. This one's going to be Earth. So we'll go ahead and rename this as Earth. Now Venus and Mercury, neither one of them had moons. So I don't have to concern myself with them. But Earth does have a moon. So I have to actually go and create a moon for it. Um, and the same principle pretty much. We're just going to take the Earth and let's let's go ahead and make it just a smidge bigger than Venus is. Let's make it a smidge smaller. And then we're going to make ourselves a moon. So we're going to duplicate the Earth. We're going to scale this one down. Okay. Disappear inside of the planet because it is smaller. So I'll just go ahead and go outside like that. And let's uh, make it about something like that. Okay. That should be good. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call this one Moon. Okay. Now, for all the planets, I'm going to use the same moon. I'm not going to go ahead and duplicate them and try changing the shape or anything like that. Um, that will just be too much um, uh, work to go and vary all the, the moons, and it's really too early on in uh, someone who's just starting to use Maya to try to give each one a different look. We'll save that for a little bit later, a more advanced project. Okay, so moving on here, we're going to create ourselves Mars. So Mars, let's go ahead and duplicate. Okay. Mars a little bit smaller. Okay. Mars has a couple moons. I'm just going to grab these guys. I'm just going to duplicate them, move them over. I'm going to put the other one, let's say, something like that. Okay. Let's go ahead and freeze the transforms on each one of those ones we just created. Now I'm going to introduce a new hotkey to you guys. This is uh, the G hotkey. Um, G makes it to where you repeat the last command. Now, so the last command I did was freeze transforms. So instead of having to go back up here and click freeze transforms, um, if you look over here, I can just hit G and it clears it out to 1-1, one, one, okay? And same thing over here. You just go ahead and select this one, hit G again, it clears that out. Select this guy here, hit G again. All right, everything's at its 1-1 one, one scale. Hit G for Earth, now that one's also 1-1, one, one, 
Okay. Excellent. Moving along a little bit, right? Okay, so our next one is going to be, let's see here, Jupiter. Okay, so we're going to take the Mars moon. We'll just duplicate that one. Oh, I didn't name it. I almost caught myself there. Let's go ahead and call that one Mars. And we'll go ahead and duplicate this one. Control D for duplicate. Just left mouse button drag this guy over here. And we're going to make ourselves a Jupiter. And Jupiter, uh, let's put it, let's put it right here. A little further out. It's going to be a bigger one. So we're going to say it's about yeah, like so. I'm just eyeballing these guys because, like I said, we're not necessarily going by the book. Also, Jupiter has a bunch of moons. Um, I'm not going to create all the moons for Jupiter and asteroids and all that. So I'm just going to duplicate these moons. Move them over here. I'll duplicate them again. Bring them over there. Okay, that looks random enough to where it'll work, I think. Okay, and maybe like that. Okay, cool. That will be our Jupiter and all its moons. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure we're named it. Call it Jupiter. Good. All right, so now we're going to create ourselves Saturn. All right, so again, we'll just go ahead and duplicate Jupiter and bring it on over here. Um, we're going to scale this down just a little bit. I'll go ahead and call this Saturn now. Okay. Again, to duplicate is just Control D. And there's a left mouse button dragging. So also, um, so. Uh, if you didn't go through the introduction to Maya, um, these are your manipulator tools. So like I said, this is your scale tool you have going on here. This is also your scale tool right here. This is your rotate tool. This is your translate tool or your move tool. Uh, so if you click on those, they'll change your different tools you have to manipulate these guys. Um, I've been mainly using hotkeys, so um, if that has been tripping you up a little bit, um, w is translate, which is this one right here. That makes it to where we can move these guys back and forth, right? Um, e is for rotate. So here's our rotate tool. We can go ahead and rotate these guys as we want to. Um, R is scale. And then G is repeat last command. And Q is our selection tools. If I want to get rid of this here, I can just hit Q. And that goes away. I mainly use hotkeys, and if you plan on using Maya a lot in the future and not just dabbling, I highly recommend you to learn learn as many of the hotkeys as you can and figure out what your workflow is and get them incorporated in it. Um, just because it may seem like you know just a second here, a second there, um, going to the menu sets, but if you're working on bigger projects, uh, a few seconds here, a few seconds there every couple of minutes over the course of a few days turns into extra hours of work. So figure out those hotkeys, they will save you a ton of time. WER for translate, scale, and rotate are the main ones you should know. Okay, so keep going. Here we're going to say um, for Saturn, I'm not going to deal with all the moons for Saturn. Mainly what I want to do is just the ring. Um, I might do a couple moons. We'll, we'll do a couple moons for Saturn. Um, we'll say these guys here, we'll duplicate those ones and bring them over. Okay, something like that. Okay, um, now for Saturn to create the ring, now there's a couple different ways. Now, if you're following the book, the book is mainly having you use using NURBS. And NURBS are not what we're using because we can't attach texture files to NURBS. So we're going to um, since we're working polygons, we're going to do this just a little bit differently. We're going to go to our perspective here. Okay, so spacebar or this little icon right here will bring you back to your perspective view. Okay, 
space bar, and you have this four panel. Put your mouse over the top of your perspective, space bar again, you're out. Okay. If you want to get rid of this whole little window here, which has all of your objects in it, um, this is your outliner key. If you're used to using uh, my 2015, anything but what before 16, um, this icon here kind of looks like uh, your your outliner hotkey, but now it's just a, a, a two-panel layer type of uh, hotkey. This is the one you're actually looking for. Okay. Um, anyways, back to the test. Sorry, I, sometimes I get off on tangents usually when it comes to giving uh, new instructions. So there's just so much to tell. Um, I'm sure I'm not getting too far ahead or presuming you guys know things you don't necessarily know yet. Um, also, um, zooming in and out, um, that is just your scroll wheel on your mouse. Um, some other things you guys might want to know as far as getting around your screen, if you guys didn't watch the intro version of Maya, um, if you hold down Alt and left mouse button drag, um, that will rotate around an object. Um, if you middle mouse button, uh, meaning the scroll wheel, and hold down Alt, you can drag your screen back and forth. And if you hold down right mouse button on top of your object, you'll get this floating menu, which will let you, allow you to open all your different components and also access a bunch of different hot objects over here, like materials and UV sets and stuff like that. Okay, um, we'll get into that a little bit later on. Okay, um, sorry, like I said, I like to get stuck on tangents sometimes. Let's go ahead and actually create this ring for Saturn. Now, like I said, in the book, they want you to use NURBS. And using NURBS is a little bit different, so I'm not going to go into how to use those. Um, it's a completely different methodology from polygons. Um, so to create our our ring, we're going to duplicate our sphere we have currently going on here. So I'm going to hit Control D. I'm going to bring this up here. Now, remember how I said uh, if you hold down the right mouse button on top of your object, you'll get that floating menu. So right mouse button here with it selected. And we get this floating menu. We have vertexes, edges, faces, and object mode. Object mode is currently what it's in. When your object is all green lit up like that, that means you're in your object mode, which means you don't have any of your components selected. You can just move your object, rotate it, scale it. That's all you can do. Now, to manipulate the components, we're going to want to get rid of um, some of our components so we can make a ring out of this thing. So we're going to go to our face mode. Okay. So now it turns this blue, and as you move your mouse around the top of your sphere here, you get these little glowing red boxes, right? Um, okay. So you want to delete off the bottom half of this sphere. Okay. So we're just going to select all these guys here. Just holding down left mouse button and hold just do a little marquee selection. Um, now, if you're starting to have like what's going on here with me, I'm having trouble focusing on that particular part that I just selected. If you press the F button that will focus on your selected object. So hit F and it frames it in. Okay, so now I can left mouse button drag around that and pick out any of the faces that I happen to miss on that, that first selection. Okay, so just holding down Shift, left mouse button clicking, and I'm just adding in the faces that I didn't get under that marquee box. Okay, with these bottom half here selected, I'm just going to hit Delete, and I'll get rid of the bottom part of the sphere. Okay. Excellent. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and select the top half of the sphere. Okay, there we go. All right, we hit delete to get rid of that. So now I'm left with this ribbon looking thing, kind of a belt. Okay, <clears throat> next thing we're going to do is we're going to flatten this belt into the ring we need. So we're going to go back to our object mode. We don't want to be in face mode anymore. So holding down right mouse button on top of our object, we're going to go to object mode. Okay. And now we're going to scale this until it's flat. So to scale it, the hotkey is R, or it's this icon right here. So I'll hit R for scale. And if you grab this box here at the very top of the scale tool, um, that will make it to where we can scale up or down. So we want to left mouse button click and drag it down to that teal box in the center until it's flat like so. Okay. So now we have this little ring here just like we wanted, right? Okay. Excellent. Now, if your little uh, gizmo here is too small or too big, um, the plus sign will make your uh, your handles grow bigger or smaller. Okay, so that's uh, that's just a little FYI for you guys. Okay, so now we're looking at our ring here, and I don't know about you, but I feel like this ring is not—it's a little too skinny. It doesn't look like a Saturn ring to me, right? 
So what we want to do is we want to make this a little thicker. So how are we going to do that? Um, we're going to have to go back to our component types. So hold down right mouse button on top of the ring. And this time we're going to go to our edge mode. Okay. Now if you left mouse button click on one edge, there we go, now we have it selected. But I want the entire outer ring selected. So that's called an edge loop because one edge goes all the way around and connects to itself. That's called an edge loop. So we're going to double click one edge and it'll give us the whole loop. Okay, so just left mouse button twice on that single edge, gave me the whole loop. Okay, so now I can grab this teal box in the center of our scale tool, my left mouse button, and I'll scale by dragging to the left, or to the right, I'm sorry. Left will scale in, right will scale, scale out. Okay, so I'm scaling until I feel like that's about good. Um, I'm going to do the same thing on the inside, so just double click on the inside, scale inward. Do the same thing with these rings here. And the reason why I'm evening these out is because eventually we're going to have texture that's going to be attached to this guy. But having it to where our geometry is evenly spread out will make it to where our textures look nice. Okay. All right, so right mouse button on top of the ring. We're going to go to object mode. Okay. And we're going to scale it up so it doesn't puncture our plant when we sit it down on top of it. And then we're going to scale this or translate this down. So I just hit W for translate. That's the way, reason why the gizmo here changed. Or you can select this, uh, this button right here. That will bring you back to your uh, translate tool. Now we're grabbing this arrow right here. This is our up and down, our Y axis. So let's go ahead and bring this down to where it is on top of our planet here. And that was pretty good. I don't have any moon sitting on top of the ring. So that was good to me. Okay, it's perfect. Okay. All right. So right now we're at about 27 minutes. So this looks like a good stopping point. Um, we have a few more plants left to make, and we have a lot of more uh, to go with our texture and our animation. So I feel like this is a good pause point. Um, let's go ahead and save what we have going on here. So we're again go to File, Save Scene. Okay. All right. So you can see down here result user owner desktop. Solar System 2017 Project Scenes Folder Scene 1 was saved successfully. Okay. Alright guys, well, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.